Hi everybody, it's Diane with Sobatique and today is Fabric Friday. It is the 11th of August and today outside here in North Dakota, it is a little foggy. It's a little gray. Looks like it's going to rain. It's just got that ugh, feeling <laughs> to it, which is really awful. Um, but not as awful as what's happening in Hawaii. So I just want to say just really quickly, because I can't not say it. I, Bruce and I spent a lot of time in Maui on vacations and in Kauai. Just, we love Hawaii. And so before we started this company and didn't go on any more vacations, <laughs> we did love, love, love to travel and someday we'll get back there again. Um, but I just feel awful for what is happening to our friends on Hawaii, on Maui, and just know we're thinking about you. And we'll follow along and see if there's anything we can't do as a community to help you. Um, it's gonna be a long process, but um, so I had to say that I just, it, I just keep watching it and I can't get it out of my head. So anyway, <laughs> let's talk about Batik and give you some updates. First, I want to share with you that over the weekend, I'll be posting, um, a video, a tutorial on how to make these open, the cutest open wide zipper pouches. This is a pattern by Annie patterns. And I've started by making the large bag and look how large this bag is truly a large bag. Um, I don't have all my measurements here and here's the medium size bag. And then there is a small bag that I still have to make. And it's about half the size, maybe a quarter the size of the large bag, just to give you perspective. And I don't want to spend any more time on it right here because there will be a full tutorial step by step of how to make it. And I use the medium bag as my tutorial sample. So definitely follow along with that. But the kits are on our website and our kits actually have yardage because it's just such an economical way to do this. They have yardage for all three sizes out of one kit. And so make them super fun. And we'll talk about this a little bit later. Keep following us on social media so you can see the little small one um, and check out the video once we get it up on our YouTube channel, okay? What I wanna spend a lot of time talking about is, let me grab my notes, is the jacket I'm wearing and which is the same jacket that's on our mannequin here. This is Batik Rayon, and it, the Rayon has, as you know, just amazing drape. And this fabric, just really quickly, is the Lady May motif, and this is the colorway of Dusty Topaz. So it has a really beautiful blue in the motif. And as you can see with all of the, this is the shawl collar jacket. It just has really great drape, fits elegantly, and just, it's so comfortable just to, to put on whether or not it's in your office space, just to keep a little bit warm come fall, or if you're going out on the town or whatever it happens to be. This is one of our new fabrics, new boutique rayon fabrics. And this is the flock together motif in the colorway of cerulean. And I'm really super glad that I was able to make this jacket. I didn't make it but select the fabric for this jacket. Kathy made this jacket and it, it's phenomenal. Um, I really wanted to showcase the blue in this particular fabric and how it is such a, it's such a crisp blue and it is um, not like any other fabric that we have in our collection of rayon. Um, I, Really seriously, if you were to ask me what would coordinate with this to make a set, um, I really would have a hard time finding the right fabric. So what I did in my images here is I wore it with black slacks and this white shirt just to just to show you the elegance of the of the jacket. 
but um, we're going to talk a little bit about construction as well and differences in how you construct your jacket. And um, I'm going to show you a little, you know, little, little changes that we did for this particular one. But let's talk a little bit about the pattern. This is the McCall's, and I've written all over this thing, but this is the McCall's 8052. It has long sleeve jacket, short sleeve jacket, and a no sleeve vest option. And I've made both the vest and the long sleeve. I have not made a short sleeve option, but it is the shawl collar aspect of it and the fullness of the collar that really makes this jacket. It is quite long when you follow the length of the garment, but let's get started. It is, measurements are from a extra small to an XXL, and it has the size ranges in numbers, but it's basically a bust of 29 and a half to a bust of a 48. And then it goes through the waist and the hip measurements. What I wanna to talk to you about too is the length. It's long and I'm gonna stand up. So the first one I made was this particular version. And as you can see, I'm gonna back up a little bit more. It is long the, and then the shawl collar in the front does dip down into a V, but I'm gonna kind of turn around and I made the medium size and the length on the medium is 31 inches. So here's my waist, it goes way down to the middle of the of your leg back here. So it is really long. And I think that's what adds to the amount of yardage that you need for this jacket. I also made the sleeves a little too long. I think they they needed to be an inch shorter, which is what we did over here. And the length for an extra small is 29 and a half and for an XXL is 32 inches. So that's really a tunic length jacket, which, you know, in a way is very, very nice. Just super, super um, easy to wear and easy to throw on. And I will share with you the volume of fullness as well. So if I were to take this collar, it is quite tall. <laughs> and you could almost wrap this around you if you wanted to put a hook or a decorative um, clasp right here. And you would have a jacket that you don't really see the V in the front, but it could really be a nice cover up. Um, but the fullness in the front is really what's intended for this garment. What I did for this jacket from a sizing perspective was I lengthened or I shortened it four inches and I shortened the arm another inch. So those were the measurements that I gave to Kathy um, for her to sew this garment up. A couple of features for this jacket. Beyond the fact that it is a shawl collar, this is how much fabric, ooh, I'm gonna move this back. But this is how much fabric there is for the shawl. You see how tall it gets? It's about, I don't know, nine inches from the base of the neck to the tip of the collar. And there are darts from, this, from the point of your shoulder, starting seat here, the shoulder seam, down to right, right across your bust. And that's it. The back is intended to be a fitted back. So this is really what we care about when we make this garment, is we wanna make sure that our shoulders fit. So base everything off your bust and don't think about any of this fullness. That's just the fullness in the design of the jacket. We wanna make sure that this area here fits you perfectly because the rest of it will. And uh, pay attention too, to the measurements from your side seam here to your side seam on the other side, right around the hip, because that's where we want it to fit nicely. So if you need to adjust anything in the center of the back, you can still do that on this pattern, okay? 
but otherwise it's just a simple sleeve and really simple construction of this jacket. Now, I'm going to put up here on the video the, uh, um, the front images of both of these jackets, the side images, and the back. So you can see the difference in the length. They both have their um, pluses and minuses. So I just really wanted something to be just a little bit shorter because I felt like there was an overwhelming amount of fabric around me. And um, so we can reduce the amount of fabric in the front by shortening this also. Um, but, uh, you know, four inches was a lot, but I felt like it was just perfect. So the four inches got me right below um, my bum area <laughs> right here. And that was really nice. So I just like to have a nice straight jacket in the back with all of this fluidity in the front. I think that was perfect. Now I need to compliment Kathy um, every day, but on this particular jacket, it's she put an enormous amount of work into this. And I think it also goes to show that construction and learning new techniques and doing extra special finishes is really adds to the elegance of a garment. When I first made this particular jacket, since batiks are in essence reversible, this is perfect for this jacket wearing a batik simply because the colorway is the same on both sides. You don't see a white on the inside of this jacket, which is, or a light color um, if it was a printed fabric. So it's really a great way to use a batik. But what I did when I finished the edges here was I simply um, stitched, I, I surged my edges, folded them over, and then hid them in a top stitching uh, manner all the way down to the point here um, my inside my sleeves are surged and so it does have a surging finish to it. What Kathy did with this jacket, which when I look at this jacket, I think, and we talked about this too, I think of a, an elegant evening out with a long skirt, a long dress, um, a mother of the bride, um, something that is just truly a, a beautiful way to, to showcase the fabric as well as an elegant outfit. And you could have um, just a T-length dress underneath and then in the evening put on this jacket, just gorgeous. So with that in mind, Kathy finished this by turning the edge and I'm gonna move this up a little bit for you, but simply turning the edge, pressing it, and she hand-stitched every single finished edge all the way around this garment. She hand-stitched it in place, and she has an amazing way of doing that because you can't even see that this was hand-finished and hand-stitched all the way around. The seams in the back along the collar over to the shoulder are French seamed. Again, you can't see any finishes. It's beautiful. And then I believe she, yes, the flat felled side seams are just perfect. So whatever, whatever your skill set happens to be, Sometimes I think it's great to just challenge ourselves, learn a different finish and use something with, which has simple structure to do that extra little bit of detail. And I should learn myself not to cons consistently rush through these projects just to get them done and just to wear them and for the evening out and you know, probably shouldn't start making them the morning of the event. So that, that is me. <laughs> so, um, but I just hope you absolutely love this jacket. And the yardage for the jacket is very accurate on the back of this, this jacket pattern. And our garment kit also is reflective of the fabric requirements for a 45 inch wide rayon. I have not made this out of um, a jersey knit or a linen or any other fabric because I think 
this would look beautiful out of any construction. And I think our even our jersey knit, I have made several jackets with jersey knit. I think it's just taking into account the drape is going to be different. Um, the linen, the drape will be different. It will not be as fluid as what these jackets are made from the rayon, okay? But the yardage for the long sleeve version um, and at its true length is two and three fourths yards for an extra small to three and a half for an XXL. And I think it's because, and you're gonna see here in a minute, I'm gonna do a little bit of a layout um, for converting 45 inch wide woven fabric to 72 inch wide jersey knit and how we need to manage that and how we can play with that and figure all that out. But this jacket, if you take, if you take your side seam here, and you're gonna see this by what I'm showing you here, but if you take the side seam and pull this out all the way to the front fullest point, it is over 22 inches, which means you have to open up your 45 inch wide rayon and lay this flat. There's no way to get two front pieces out of one width of 45 inch wide fabric. So we either have to lay, and again, I'm gonna show that to you over there, but you either have to lay one piece out one direction and then lay the other nesting it the other direction, or take your fabric, and this is directional fabric, by the way, take your fabric and lay it opposite it itself, full width, 45, and then put your pattern piece on and cut both at the same time so you have, you have your accurate front pieces when it has a directional fabric. So anyway, but it does take a lot of yardage simply because of the fullness. But if you are um, shorter, I'm 5'6", but if you're shorter and want to reduce that length, definitely do your math, see how much you need to reduce, and then you may or may not need the level of yardage that is included in our garment kit, okay? But I just love this jacket. I, I just, Kathy did such a spectacular job on the finishing, and um, give yourself a challenge as well to learn a different finishing technique, and I think, um, you know, we all need to do that from time to time. So these garment kits are on our, our website as well. And I have added the cerulean fabric as an option if that's something that you absolutely adore. But always remember that any one of our batik rayon fabrics um, can be selected for your jacket. We give you some to start. And then if you want your own custom one, select the option for customizing your rayon and let us know which one you select. Okay, so. The next thing I want to share with you is I was going to give you an update on our two more projects for this month. Actually, I will. The I'll put a picture up here. The quilt that we are making this month is going to be from our gradation fabrics. And I asked last week or two weeks ago uh, whether you would like a white background to work with the gradations or a dark background. And I have to honestly tell you, every single one of the answers was dark, meaning black. I personally hope that you will be fine with the fact that I'm gonna make this kit optional. We will make sure that there is an option for a lighter background, an option for our solid black, which is called tuxedo. Um, I'm going to make it using a fabric that we call deep wisteria, which is a deep, deep, rich blue. And it has movement to it. It has a modeling to it where our tuxedo is a solid black. And I really just love the movement. And the other reason that I am going to do blue is I'm concerned about one of the pieces in this block is a black fabric and that black strip separates the colored lattice work. And so I'm playing a little bit with how we can still get that look of that black strip without ruining everything. So um, 
We're going to make a couple test blocks. So next week you're going to see some test blocks and see how we go about figuring out the colorways. But we will make this multiple options. And I really thank you for getting back to me because I did not think that everybody's answer was going to be black or dark. And so thank you for that. And that really matters to me. The other project update that we have is the hoodie made from our Jersey knit. We selected the Violetta Strawberry and um, the hoodie is the Mile End hoodie pattern. Kathy has, um, we washed up the fabric and Kathy's cutting that out. And then I am going to do a quick, see that word again? <laughs> surge. I'm going to surge this thing together because I'm really excited to see how this fits and um, we're getting to where we, we are going to need some hoodie um, weather weather clothing. So that's our update on that. So next week we're going to, going to really have some fun with those two projects as well. I'm going to go directly to our um, answering a customer question right now now. So let's just jump over to the cutting table and I'm going to show you how we answer your questions when you ask about converting a pattern that is intended for 45 inch wide fabric into what it will take for 72 inch wide jersey knit. We are often asked to help convert the yardage that a pattern requires from 45 inch wide rayon, as an example, to 72 inch wide Jersey knit. And so on my cutting table here, I have the bright purple hand dyed Jersey knit. This is folded. So I have a selvage, the selvages are over here. My folded edge is over here. And the question we got this week is specifically to a jacket. And it's the little something jacket. Here's a picture of the cover. And it is written for woven fabric, but there is absolutely nothing that stops you from making this particular jacket out of a knit, and especially a stable knit, like our um, 72 inch wide batik cotton jersey knit. So this particular pattern requires three yards or so, if you're gonna make the full length, full sleeve, three yards of 45 inch wide fabric. And I decided to bring in my pattern and lay this out to show you how to lay this out to save a little bit of yardage when you're selecting the jersey knit. Okay, so I have my fold line over here. This pattern has three main pattern pieces. There's the front piece, which is, you have to cut two pieces for the front. You can see how full the front edge of the hemline edge of this pattern is. There's the sleeve where we cut two of the sleeve, and then there's the back. And this is placed on the center fold so I'm gonna start and hope, I, these are very long jacket pattern pieces. And so you might not see both ends of this particular pattern, but just know I'm more worried about laying this out to fit my 72 inch wide fabric when it's folded in half. And I did decide, well, you might say, well, don't fold it in half yet because I always teach you guys not to do that. But this particular pattern, it is best to simply fold it in half and you'll see why. We'll place the back pattern piece right on the fold of the fabric. And I believe that this is, I think it's approximately 27 to 28 inches long. Now, this is showing a pattern piece the size 10 and her garment size goes up to a 24, but I did do a little bit of measuring and grading to know that this will fit regardless of size on the yardage that I'm about to show you here. So we put this on the, the uh, fold. I'm gonna set this aside. This is the sleeve. Set that aside for a moment. And now we have a straight of grain arrow and it's a little full. If I were a size 
16, 18, 20, up to a 24, and positioned my fabric this way with the pattern pieces, I'm not gonna be able to get the back and two front pieces out of this fabric. So what we're going to do is simply flip this around, and you're all saying, I knew that. <laughs> we're going to flip this around and look at all the additional space we have to be able to pattern piece for the back, pattern piece for the front, and I believe that the front pattern piece measures about 36 inches from the neck down to the hem. Now you may lengthen or shorten this, but one yard of the jersey knit will support our back and front. Now, I'm gonna take these off because I can't get my sleeves on the same fabric. And instead of rolling my fabric across the table, which is unnecessary, I'm gonna grab my sleeve and think again now of, we've got our back and our front. Really the only realistic thing that we can do with this particular pattern piece, because it is the sleeve, here is our grain line. We wanna make sure that that is straight of grain following our knit line. You'll need two of these. So basically we need one yard for the back and front, and then we need an additional yardage for the length of the sleeve we want to make. So if you would like to make the three quarter length sleeve, you'll need approximately, I would say 22 inches more or five eighths of a yard more to support that because we also want to allow for shrinkage of the jersey knit. It does shrink when you pre-wash it, so we have to allow for a couple of inches of shrinkage. If it's the long sleeve, we need another 27 inches for the sleeve. So that will give us anywhere from a yard and three quarters, a yard and seven eighths, to two yards of fabric of the 72 inch wide jersey knit will um, is all we need to have to make our little something jacket. So this is how I go about kind of figuring out how to convert the 72 inches um, into the 72 inches when I'm starting with something that's 45 inch wide, okay? Now, I am going to grab real quick the pattern pieces for today's McCall's pattern which is the 8052. I'll be right back. Okay, the reason I wanna show you this is that, and this is a very similar jacket pattern to the simple, or the little simple jacket, or little something jacket, okay? It's very sim similar. It has the fluid collar area that has a lot of fabric, it has a long sleeve, and it has a simple back that's placed on the fold. But, the McCall's pattern, and this is why it's so important for me to take a moment to always lay out the pattern pieces and not to guess on yardage. And you're gonna see where I'm going with this once I lay these out. Here we go. Here is, you can tell from where I'm positioning it, this is the back pattern piece. And this has been cut to, I believe it's a size medium. So this pattern was a extra small through XXL, I believe. So here we have our back piece. I'm gonna set the sleeve aside for a moment. And here we have the front, and we need two fronts. And here's our straight of grain. I can't possibly get all of this on 36 inches going across. So I'm gonna do my little trick and flip this around. It's not a trick. It's probably what every, everybody would logically do. And look what happens here. It really is too tight. So I'm gonna slide off the backing piece 
And we need, it is very long, we need about a yard and a quarter for just, let me line this up because that's gonna be our green line, for just the two front pieces. We'll need that almost in full, okay? And then we'll need the length of the back piece and our sleeves, whichever is longer. There's our sleeves and then straight of grain. We'll need again that much fabric to lay out this entire garment, which has three pattern pieces. And I believe the length of this particular jacket, if it's left that long, is almost 32 inches long. So we would need at least two yards to two and a quarter to two and a half, depending on how long you want this jacket. And for today's, and hopefully I'm not being redundant, but for today's uh, showing of our McCall's 8052, I reduced the length by four inches. And so that does take away a little bit of our yardage need. So just know how long you want your jacket to be. And for this particular one, you need the length of your pattern piece for the front, plus the length of the back. And that is your yardage of the 72 inch wide Jersey knit. So it really, I guess what really matters is when we have stop moving this tissue around I think here in a second when we're working with a pattern that has excessive or a lot of fullness because of its pattern design we need a lot of fabric regardless of if it's 45 inches wide or 72 inches wide or it could be a, a 54 or 60 inch wide linen we still need to know the width when it is on straight of grain of our pattern pieces and the largest and the length so I'm always happy to help you through these questions by laying things out on the fabric. Um, we don't necessarily need the fabric. It just is difficult to show anything on the grid of our cutting mats here um, because you can measure this and think 36 inches on a tape measure and you'll be able to also figure out how to lay out your pattern pieces and how much yardage you truly need. Now, remember, if you have any questions or if you have a pattern, even if we don't offer the pattern, because we right now are not selling the little something jacket uh, patterns, and I hadn't thought about that in a long time. We sold that pattern and those kits at quilt shows for years and years and years and years. And I think it it's the same designer as our little, as our, um, uh, Simple Elegant Tea, God, that just escaped me, but the Simple Elegant Tea top that we are still offering. So if you have a question, give me a chat message, uh, ask me if I can help you do the conversion, or give me a phone call or send me an email at services at sobatique.com. And I will, if I don't have the pattern, I will get it. We'll figure it out. I'll help you do the right yardage conversion. Because as you can see in that video, it's not as simple as taking um, the math that you would if you were a quilter and converting your inches to the size of the pieces. But what really matters is just that. It's the size of the piece. So if we're working with a 10 inch square, as an example, as a quilter, and we only have a fat eighth, which is nine by 22, it doesn't work. And so if we have a jacket that has a front pattern piece and I don't know the fullness of it, I can't set it on the pattern to understand how we can kind of do our little nesting and Jenga <laughs> to actually match the um, grain line all at the same time and still get the garment that we expect to get. So just let me know. Give me a call and we will help you out with that and we learn it as well. So hopefully that was informative for you. And next is our reintroduction of several of our 115 inch wide batik cotton fabrics, our 72 inch wide jersey knit, as well as our batik 
rayons, our 45 inch wide batik rayons. So this is week number five of our summer savings event. And this is the grouping of rayon right behind me here. And they are beautiful. So stay tuned and we'll be right back. This is the collection of backings for our week five of this summer savings event. And we selected some neutrals and some brights to go along with them. And starting right over here is our hand dyed azalea. And this is the azalea dark version. Remember we have two different shades. And so this is the current one, which is azalea dark. This is juniper, hand dyed juniper, and these go so well together. The first thing I think about with these two, actually, and combining it with this, is getting ready for the holidays, kind of a traditional red and green. The next fabric is Phoenix in the shade of Sand Surf, and this is a wonderful neutral, whether it be for cutting up and piecing the quilt top that you might have, or a wonderful coordinate for sashing, um, and of course, a backing. The next fabric, we have definitely coordinated with our Tuxedo Brass, as well as the Lake family, and this is Valhalla Early Autumn. It has a lot of different shades with the, this goes really well with the green. This is the juniper green, um, which does read different from our budding green back over there. We'll get to that one in a minute. Um, so juniper goes really well with Valhalla early autumn. It has browns and golds and greens running through that motif. Now it's really fun too. I'm looking right over here at chrome. This is Valhalla chrome and it really shows the the design of the motif because that white in the motif really is quite brilliant. And so that's what each one of the Valhalla uh, designs looks like. It's just really beautiful. And I'm kind of jumping around here a little bit, but so Valhalla early autumn, here is Violetta and this is tuxedo brass. So this is a back, a black background with shades of gold running through the motif. And this has become kind of one of my favorites. I'm trying to figure out what I want to make with this. This is animal skin in the colorway of charcoal. And so comparing it to this black, it really has more hints of blue and kind of a brown in here. So I don't know what your eye sees with the colors because we all see things a little bit differently. Okay, so those are the first row of fabrics. I'm gonna slide these out of the way. And the next grouping, as I mentioned, this is the Valhalla motif in the shade of chrome. And we've got a couple of brights. This is Medora Flora Grape. And for all of our purple fabric lovers, I'm gonna show these two at the same time because the colors that are within the motif of Medora Flora are kind of the pastels. We've got some yellows, we've got teals or uh, turquoise. We have a strawberry shade that runs through it. And these actually go very well together. So this is cantaloupe and this is grape. Fold that. And the next is our beautiful sachet pink shade and this is violetta motif i really love and you can even see the pinks coming through on the grape medora flora fabric right here that goes really well with that as well it's really just a, a beautiful delicate soft shade of pink The next fabric is one of our newer ones, actually, and this is Gardenies Divine Motif, and this is Golden Glow Multi. So it has kind of a, kind of an eggplant shade for the background with a whole bunch of different shades running through the motif. We've got some yellows, some corals, turquoise, some lime greens, 
This would actually go very well if you, we worked it into a collection of nuanced gradation shades. That would be absolutely gorgeous. I kind of have visions of quilts when I think about each one of these backings. And then here is Violetta Budding Green. This is really a bright green as compared to if I set this next to the, the Juniper hand dyed fabric here, they they read very differently. Okay, so this is our collection of 115 inch wide batik cottons for this week's summer savings event. I really love the selections of fabrics for the Jersey Knit um, collection this week. And I think you will too. This is, now remember this Jersey Knit is 72 inches wide. And here is kind of the selvage edge, what we call the selvage edge. And so it has about 20% stretch in our Jersey. And this is the Phoenix motif in the shade of Tutti Frutti. This is Garden East Divine in the shade of Dazzle. Look at that, look at all those colors. Isn't that just amazing? This is just really a beautiful, beautiful shade. Very bright and bold. Here is hand-dyed lilac, and this goes amazingly well with our Garden East Divine lilac that we have. This is the Garden East Divine motif in Delft Meadow. Lots of blue and greens with a lighter shade of blue that's in the motif. We did a garment and I made a garment. I think it was with this fabric and our hand dyed lake, which happens to be a fan favorite, just because it looks like ocean and water and it's just such a beautiful, beautiful fabric. So hand dyed lake, and then I think we did a color block. I think it was a color block top. I have to find the pattern and show you a picture of that, but it was just a combination of the Delft fabric with lake. And Jersey knit is absolutely wonderful for, for tops, just a comfortable knit top, um, a hoodie, which we're making this month. Uh, various um, tunics, anything that just, you know, it just exudes comfort. This here is the Phoenix motif in Asian blue. So you can see the difference here. We do get a lot of questions about what does the Asian blue look like with both lake and how does it differ from Delft Meadow? So you can kind of see the difference in intensity of the background shade that runs through the motif on the Delft Meadow. It's a little bit grayer and far more subtle, uh, the motif on the Phoenix Asian Blue. And Lake is just Lake, that's just beautiful. <laughs> and then finally, we have another hand-dyed favorite is our Twilight Blue. And we also have various motifs in the shade of Twilight Blue that make this a wonderful coordinate. And I think I made Yep, I shouldn't say I think. I made Bruce a shirt, a t-shirt, uh, just a pullover round neck collar t-shirt out of the hand-dyed twilight blue. So it's really a great fabric for t-shirts and well, just about anything. So these are the shades for this week's summer savings event. I really love today's collection of batik rayon that I want to reintroduce to you. This is also part of our summer savings event. So each one of these will be discounted this week, but I selected kind of a range of pinks and pastels, brights, but mostly blues, browns shades in here. And I think it'll be fun to introduce another, a couple of border fabrics that we really don't talk about very much. Um, the first fabric here is the Phoenix motif in the shade of strawberry. 
And I really like moving these fabrics around because it really shows the level of drape that each one of these has. This is Violetta in the shade of Cotton Candy, which is really a mix of pastels. And so we have some pinks and periwinkles and sage that make up this really pretty shade. I have to remember if I've made something out of this one. I'll have to showcase that as well. Here is a hand-dyed fabric, and this is called Shazam Multi, and it's really a bold mix of shades for um, any really super fun garment that you'd like to make out of this. I just think it's fantastic. And we've made a lot of chenille scarves with this fabric as well. It really has a blend that gives a chenille scarf a really special, special feel and special look. This is one of our border batiks and this is, the color is lake and I know you're familiar with the color lake, but this border batik is called Downton. And so you can see that from one selvage edge, it has a very compact vine motif and then it changes into kind of a loosely dispersed design. And then the other salvage edge is the hand eyes. So this makes a beautiful jacket. And I will show you what we did with this fabric. And I believe it was a fit for art pattern and just a gorgeous way to showcase a, a border that is done in actually a shorter jacket too. You don't always have to think really, really super long for borders. This is again, another lake color, but this motif is called, this is a border, it's a double border, and it is Liriope, but it's double border because there's a border starting on this selvage edge, which goes down to a border on the other selvage edge. So let's take a look at, I know it's really hard to look at these unless I go a big distance away um, but let me fold this in half and you will see that each selvage edge has that border I have made several garments and um, the schoolhouse tunic and one of the I think I called it looks 70s top it has a really full sleeve and you can lay out your pattern to use this border here at the hem of a garment and then still use the top border for your sleeves and other portions of the of the garment so this if you think in thirds one selvage edge to the top of the border is a third of 45 and then we have the hand eyed in the middle and then we have another motif on the other side of the selvage and here is that same fabric in the colorway of brown bark. Really beautiful with the yellows going through that motif. And last week we featured a cream pearl as well in the mo it was a different motif. It was the animal skin motif. And this is Lady May. And again, just a wonderful light flowy colorway. I just really love the cream and the pearl together and I guess that's what really got us to name it cream pearl. And the next fabric is again this is Lady May as well and you may not see very much of that motif. It just adds a little bit of texture to the colorway of um, majestic blue. And here is the cream pearl along with the majestic blue. It would be a really great outfit if this were a camisole or a tank top or a top underneath the majestic blue as a jacket. Really would be gorgeous. The next fabric is the Phoenix motif. And this is the color of Copen Blue. And if I set that next to Lake or the other majestic blue, you can see the difference in the color. It really is a gorgeous, almost teal, but a copen blue is the colorway. Here is pinpoint leaf is the motif, and it's just a tiny little pinpoints. And this is deep wisteria. 
So it has a little bit of periwinkle and I would say some kind of a grape color running through this motif. And this is deep wisteria. And the last featured fabric is our violetta motif in the shade of, of dark brown. Love that. I just really love these browns this season. There we have it, a wonderful selection of batik rayon. Again, 45 inch wide, simple care, simple machine wash. I'm back. So what do you think about all those amazing fabrics? You know, it took, actually it took me as long of a time to lay everything out to do those videos as it did for me to like put them all back together again. But let me know what you think was your favorite cotton, your favorite jersey, and your favorite rayon. I'd really love to hear. And I just want you to have an absolutely amazing Friday and happy Fabric Friday and enjoy your weekend. I'm actually gonna spend some time out in the garden. I think the weather here is gonna give me a chance to do that. Plus, there is a new place that's kind of like a mini farmer's market around here on Saturday morning that I think we're gonna go visit. So if I don't quickly answer a chat message, that's probably where we are at. Um, but have a great weekend and keep sewing, smiling, and sharing.